Can you guys see it? So uh, today, my my name is Nyotan Cho. They call me Mayo. And uh, today I'll be talking about RSpec. It's a TDD framework and uh, a little bit about feature testing with Capybara and uh, you know whatnot, all the other stuff uh, involved with the uh, behavioral driven development. So uh, what exactly is RSpec? RSpec is a TDD uh, framework, just like a Rails own uh, test unit, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, they, RSpec wants to put us up as a one of the tools you use when you're doing a BDD behavioral driven development, which consists of TDD domain driven design, acceptance test uh, driven planning. So all those things are BDD, and RSpec is just one of the tools you can use to do TDD under BDD, and. Uh, I summed it up like this. Uh, when you are doing our, uh, I mean, any kind of TDD, it's uh, pretty much like a, you. there's some uh, context given, and then uh, when some event occurs, then I expect some outcome. So given some context, when some event occurs, then I expect some outcome. And uh, that's uh, pretty much like the whole thing about our spec. And uh, today, I'm not gonna get into like pros and cons of Rails test unit versus our spec uh, and uh, all those stuff. I'm just here to just uh, you know inform people our, our spec exists and how you can get things done with our spec. But if you want to know about that, uh, there's uh, the creator of Rails, uh, DHH. He doesn't really like our spec. I put a few uh, links here. He, uh, he 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 just wants to go simplistic and stuff. So uh, yeah, you can check it out uh, later in the uh, slide. I'm gonna put it on the lightning lightning um, website. So uh, this is the structure of our spec. It's uh, like I said before, given some context, when some event occurs, then I expect some outcome. So uh, when you do uh, like this is the syntax goes like this, our spec dot describe. And uh, this is a controller test. Uh, one of the controller tests that I put an example, uh, static pages controller, and that the type is controller. And then uh, you describe it. So the first two describe are what are what uh, what are given, and then uh, that syntax goes like this. this goes like this: uh, it renders an index template. That is when something happens, and then what do you do? You expect a response to render template, and that is index. And uh, yeah, so it, it's a very similar in a sense that like you just do the pretty much the same steps as a uh, Rails uh, mini test um, test unit. But uh, the syntax is a little different. That's one of the reasons. Uh, one of the reasons a lot of people, uh, I mean, some people don't like using R spec because they have to learn a whole different uh, language, somewhat uh, to learn R spec. So it go, It's uh, but if you break it down like this, it's not that complicated. It's just a uh, you describe stuff and then uh, it does something and then you expect something. So the expect uh, part is a uh, equivalent to uh, assert assertion and, uh, for our test unit. So um, yeah, that's the baby. And uh, let's. Uh, so I, I'm gonna show how to do, how to use RSpec with uh, just Ruby code first, and then we'll move on to Rails. So uh, first of all, you're gonna do a uh, jam install RSpec on uh, on your terminal, and that should install RSpec. And uh, you and then you create a folder, and then uh, when you put in RSpec. Uh, dash dash in it is going to create a dot r spec file and a spec helper file and uh, those are uh, the that's the setup for our spec so a spec helper can like uh, actually like you know it should bring in the actual uh, ruby uh, classes like here require relative uh, car so it's going to bring in car dot rb and uh, under spec helper uh, i will switch screen and i will show um Uh, sublime text where uh, you can see the whole thing better. Okay, sublime text. So, Maya, just so you know, all we can see now is your slides. Yeah, uh, can you see the sublime text now? Perfect. Okay. Cool. So uh, that's not the one yet. 
I have another one. My car is back. Okay. Okay, so um, this is the spec helper, and uh, this is how it is set up under spec. Uh, there will be car spec. That's where all the um, tests are going to go. And there is a spec helper, and uh, that is just bringing in a car uh, dot rb. So this is a car, and this is a class that I created. It's a very basic class with the accessors, make model type, and then like a method honk return this. And then this is how it, it gets tested um, here. So uh, before every, before anything, is a you know you set it up the test just like how you would do it uh, with mini test. And then uh, when you describe a new, um, this is a describe method, and then it takes three parameters. So you expect the car instance to be an instance of car. This is our spec three syntax, which is a lot similar to uh, test unit than our spec two. Our spec two uses a lot of uh, should. So like our spec two, it will be like a car should be an instance of car. But uh, our spec three gets like a lot. Kind uh, of for me, coming from a test unit, our spec three is so much easier to pick up. And, and uh, same thing with you know I describe make do it returns the correct make, and then uh, expect uh, car dot make two equals make it could make and the model is the same thing and the type pretty much the same describe it expect and the honk uh describe it expect to honk honk yeah it's just like that so uh when you uh run our spec it's uh you know i yeah it's just uh the you just put in uh, can you guys see the terminal no we can't not yet. Yeah. I got, um, okay. So, uh, yeah, so uh, the syntax is very simple. You just go into the, uh, the folder and the R spec, uh, spec slash car uh, uh, underscore spec dot RB. And then uh, this is what happens. And then, you know, under here, dot R spec. That's where you can uh, do a couple of things like you know color coding and uh, require spec helper and format dot. If you take this out, it's just gonna show dot 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 dot. So like, this is gonna it's just gonna show like all the dot 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 dot. So this is uh, what it does. Form. Uh, so uh, if you do like this format doc, then it starts showing like this. So uh, there's a few things you can do with our spec. And uh, let me go back to my slides. Uh, are the slides up? Yeah, they are. OK. Cool, man. I'm having a hard time with this Zoom. So, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the you know how it's uh, done with Ruby uh, code. So uh, require spec helper, and then you describe something, and then uh, this is the setup for this, and then uh, you describe the like the method, and it returns the correct sound. That's just a you know you put in the quotation mark. You just describe yourself whatever you want to test, and you expect the uh, instances uh, method to equal something, and then this is how like you know how you do it. A format documentation that I wrote, I typed out, you can do it like this, dash FD. Uh, that's how it's done one way. And there are some other um, RSpec matchers that, you know, you know, it's uh, pretty common. So it's expect something to equals, expect something to match the uh, regular expression, like a uh, forward slash, something dot, this is a to uh, regular expression to matching. And then uh, to be true, Boolean, and then to match the array, and then uh, to start with uh, A, uh, or to start with something, and to end with something. Uh, you can also do like to start with something and end with something, and uh, to equal this or this or this. It's just uh, a few of those. And uh, you know, there's a cheat sheet that um, you can look at. Mm.
Yeah, and uh, I will put it on the uh, Lightning uh, Talk uh, website as well. It's a very popular, I mean, very useful one. So, you know, uh, if you're trying to get used to RSpec, then even this like couple of pages can actually teach you a lot of stuff. So, uh, all right, let me get back to my, my um, PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, let's get started with uh, how to use RSpec with uh, Rails. Uh, I set up the jam file. I just copy pasted it. You don't have to really do it this way, but uh, it kind of helps like a few stuff, especially uh, like Guard and a Selenium web driver if you're going to use uh, Capybara with it. And I'll show you in a bit how to do that. It's uh, This is the development and test. And then you put RSpec Rails, Factory Girl. And then uh, for the test, you put Faker, Capybara, Guard, Selenium web driver. Uh, so uh, let's, that's how jam, the jam file is set up and then uh, bundle install, and then uh, next uh, step is uh, you just do Rails generate RSpec install. That should install like uh, all the stuff for it. Uh, if you try to install RSpec in the middle of a project, you're gonna have to like generate the spec file for all the controllers and models. Uh, so like it's uh, pretty simple to uh, just Rails generate RSpec uh, controller, static pages controller. That's, a, that's the controller name. Uh, you just like, And then model is the same thing. That should uh, pr generate the spec files for controller and model. If you are going to, after you installed our spec, and uh, if you run it, Rails generate controller model, that should uh, uh, generate them automatically, all those spec files. And for Capybara, you're going to need to go to spec uh, Rails helper. And that's and then I'll put this in so that uh, you can use Capybara with it. Capybara is basically feature testing. So like you can actually like go to different pages, click on different stuff, and make sure things work the way you expect them to work. Um, okay. And uh, now we're gonna get into control the test. So uh, this is um, so that like you know we can get familiarized with all the syntax and stuff. So uh, you can use go. To our spec uh, documentation, and they show you pretty good ones as well. Uh, this is, uh, you know, our spec dot describe. This is the latest our spec 3.3 syntax. It changes a little bit. It doesn't use any more of that should anymore, and uh, it's it uses like this our spec dot describe static pages controller, and the type is controller, and then describe get index. It renders the index template. You get the index. You expect the response to Render template index. So it's something like you like reading English. You know, it's uh, it, that's that's probably one of the reasons a lot of people use RSpec in the industry. Uh, and I picked up RSpec after uh, I started going out looking for a job, and uh, <laughs> a lot of people just you know <laughs> use RSpec. Uh, I mean, put RSpec a lot. And so uh, okay, you know, it's about time. This is a good um, starting point to learn all those things. So. It's not that hard uh, from my experience. It's just uh, you just got to like be able to relate your uh, test unit um, skills to our spec. And uh, this is getting the about page. It's very simple, just like that. Describe, get about. You can put anything you want in, inside these quotes so that, you know, like just to explain yourself. It renders the about page. And then uh, you get the about and you expect the response to render template. So. Um, let me move to um, my uh, terminal and run this test live. So um, so uh, the controller test, I believe it was this one, yeah. So um, our spec, spec uh, control, controllers, uh, static. So this, uh, this is going to be the command line interface. And uh, yeah, so this is how you test it. You can go into like specific uh, tests, just like a test unit, nothing 
different here. So, um, yep, it renders the index page and renders the about page. So uh, this is very simple uh, controller test. And then we'll move on with uh, our test model test. It's almost the same. It's like our, our spec dot describe the model name and the type is going to be the model this time. So you describe, I had I tried to build this uh, app called with the model selfie. Uh, yeah, and uh, Rails uh, just pretty much automatically uh, created a model selfie with Y when I tried to create selfies. So this is how it ended up being. But anyway, uh, selfie, I just created a, a factory and uh, I just built the factory uh, selfie. And then uh, I want the type. I, I'm just checking if the title is valid. So selfie dot title two equals this is a this is the title I put in my factory. And same thing with description. Uh, selfie dot description two equals uh, this is a and and this is the you know the description that I put it in my uh, factory. So uh, the test is uh, yeah I I I just ran those tests like. Um, about maybe um, half an hour ago, so everything should pass. So our spec, spec models. Um, okay. Models, um, selfie spec. So it should run, um, it should pass to, yeah. So it has a valid factory title, valid uh, factory description. So uh, this is a uh, model. Yeah, so this is the code that I was uh, explaining in the slide. So I'm gonna go back there. This is a model test, very similar to controller test, just, you know, uh, different stuff. Good stuff, Maya. Well, it's been 10 minutes. It's a super good, fascinating talk. And I think uh, everybody learned a lot about RSpec and testing in general. But why don't we open it up to questions from the audience now to see um, if people want to sort of uh, have any specific questions to ask you about this stuff. So does anybody have any questions for Maya? What was the biggest hurdle that you ran into starting out with RSpec? Um. I would say it's uh, just getting the syntax because uh, RSpec 2 was very popular, very popular. So when I was trying to get into like RSpec, I was like, okay, I'm gonna just learn the latest version of it. And uh, when you go check the like tutorials and stuff, a lot of them use should and should not and all those. So I just wanted to get the syntax right. That's why uh, it took me quite a while to like get these slides ready. Because uh, I actually like pretty much created my own tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the same thing that I've been running into too. Is you look and try and find you know examples of how to do something, and then you see conflicting examples because one's in RSpec two and one's in three. So yeah. So you were super politically correct, Maya, when you sort of said you weren't gonna do any like comparison to test unit, and like I liked the sort of. Um, the way you pulled that off, I'm going to ask you to. Um, so I'm going to push you in that position. Oh, man. Uh, that was on my <laughs> list of questions, too, actually. <laughs> what do you think? So I'm a test unit guy, but what's your thought comparing and contrasting them? Uh, you know, if you, it's, um, okay, let me put it this way. It's, if you want to, like, just, like, you know, simple, like, test, like, without any, sugar without any like super human readable then test units is just fine but uh our spec on the other hand it has it's it's a lot more human readable and uh, it adds a few features like you know like i i just found like color and format documentation those are really good ones but uh there i'm sure there are a few because i was talking to my mentor and he was like all our spec guy so uh he said there are a lot of features that test unit doesn't have but i, I haven't found any yet at my level 
uh, except for like a couple of those. So uh, if you want a lot of features with it, then go with it. RSpec, it's a great uh, test framework you can learn. Uh, with you, even transferring your skills from test unit to RSpec, uh, it's just a matter of like, I mean, for me, it took me literally two hours and then like, boom, that's it, like it clicked. And all right, it's, 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 it's the same thing. It's just like you set up the test, you run it, and like even factory go, the setup is like you can do the same setup for our spec. It's, so, you know, it's, like, it's either you want to go simple and like, or you want to like get, you know, add stuff to it. And, uh, you know, and uh, another thing is uh, I, it's very popular amongst uh, web development community, Rails development community. So uh, when I was like looking for jobs, uh, that's that's got that's what got me started uh, getting into R spec, uh, R spec, R spec, R spec, and so I was like, okay, I need to get into this, and like, just like you know, I, it, it can't be that hard. Come on, like we we've tackled the entire monster of Rails, so this this shouldn't be that bad, and uh, it's not bad at all. It's easy. Good stuff. And, uh, can. Uh, just if, if you give me like uh, maybe 30 seconds, can I show this uh, feature test? Sure. Very quick. Very I'll quick. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's like a, it uses a JavaScript and stuff. Uh, like uh, it's uh, with a Selenium browser. So um, let me go to my um, here. And then so I'm going to just like spec, spec features. This is a feature testing. I'm going to put it on the slides. So you guys can look at it later. So features, user uh, visits home page. User visits home page. So when I run this, what happens is it's going to bring up the uh, uh, web browser and make sure that a user actually visits the home page and uh, you know, successfully. So it fires up uh, Firefox. We can only and, uh, see your terminal right now, Maya. Yeah, I mean, uh, with Zoom, it's a little hard to share, but uh, I'll try that again. Okay. So basically, what you're seeing right now is Firefox gets started up and goes to goes to home page. Gotcha, and then you see your test yeah. passing. Okay. And then you see the test passing. That's uh, that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll share that in the slides. Uh, try it out. Very cool feature, and uh, you will be amazed at it. Yeah, it's uh, using Capybara and uh, Selenium WebKit. Okay, enough plugging. <laughs> Ken's getting nervous. I can tell. <laughs> uh, cool. Good stuff. Cool. Well, all right. Nice talk, Mayo. Thank you. Yeah, very helpful. I think I think you're right as far as like the web development community too. That was well, I kind of got thrusted into it, but before I started this new job, um, I it, I started working on it, and that was the same exact reason why every job description I saw, everybody I talked to was always saying our spec. So it's a necessary evil. Sorry, Ken. <laughs> I don't think it really matters. I think you pick one and you just use it and like uh, picking up another one isn't that hard after the fact. It's learning how to test your code and how to think about like breaking code into testable units. That's the, that's the real hard part. The syntax I don't think is really what like trips people up too much, but cool. Let's keep going. I think